Sobrero. Um, early on this afternoon, uh, Dr. Tabernero from Spain presented the results from the Velour study. Can you explain us what is the aflipercept? Yes, sure. With the limitation of what we know about this molecule, uh, essentially it is a protein that traps uh, VGF-A, VGF-B and PIGF, so the three major classical uh, uh, angiogenetic factors. Therefore, this is a mole molecule that is very close to bevacizumab in terms of mechanism of action, although bevacizumab is concentrates on antagonizing VGF-A. Now, the relative contribution of VGF-B and PIGF to determining the pathogenesis of cancer, well, that's uh, unknown so far. The study results uh, showed uh, improvements in the overall survival and in progression-free survival. And in fact, we're presented for the first time uh, at the ESMO World GI Congress uh, in Barcelona in June. What kind of analysis uh, did the researchers present today in Stockholm? That was really the highlight in Barcelona, and I think it's one of the highlights here. So, the new data that were presented here in Barcelona regarded a pre-planned subgroup analysis that actually didn't add too much because the results were so good that you expected that almost every subgroup benefited from uh, uh, the new agent. Are the results from this trial supportive enough uh, to consider Aflibercept as a new treatment option despite uh, for several years uh, not having new drug approved for colorectal cancer? Yeah, I think you you hit the point. Uh, coming, say, in the mid of the last decade, we were so enthusiastic about these biologics in colorectal cancer that we expected a plethora of agents would have uh, had successes. Instead, we have seen a lot of failures. Now, uh, this agent represents a success and I'm glad that uh, the discussant uh, made uh, this point very clear. He said, yes, this is a new agent. The reason for saying that uh, is uh, the solidity of the data. This is a huge trial on 1,200 patients. Uh, this trial was done on a very hard population to have an impact on because they were uh, plat oxaliplatin resistant patients. So this is the same population as the EPIC study. We would expect, uh, uh, in terms of PFS, something in between 2.5 and 4 months as a medium PFS. Instead, the control arm here had more than 4.5 months. Now this tells us that this the control arm had a, a very nicely uh, treated, the patients in the control arm were very adequately treated. In addition, the median duration of treatment was about 4.5 months. That for a second line is very nice. Now, in the light of this, the experimental treatment lasted only 15 days longer and just these 15 days longer accounted for a higher response rate, B, longer PFS, C, prolonged survival, all significantly prolonged. On top of all this, if you look at the shapes of the survival curves, they continue to diverge, and at two years you have 50% of patients alive more in the experimental arm than in the control arm. So all these figures fit together, or all the numbers are squares, and tell us that this is an active agent. How much do we pay for it in terms of toxicity? Well, quite a bit. This is not tap water. This is not uh, an agent uh, that is void of uh, severe side effects. It essentially enhances the classical toxicity of chemotherapy. 
which may not be perceived as so good by a physician. At the same time, because the trial was done in second line, and uh, the approval will be looked for, will be searched for second line, at the same time, patients uh, will already be familiar with this type of effects, of side effects. Therefore, that type of toxicity will probably be toler tolerated. So again, I think the cost-benefit, clinical cost-benefit balance is so much in favor of the benefit.